acquiring businesses is is such a great idea. I mean, it's one of those things that in theory it works, does it work in practice? And obviously it does because a lot of businesses are acquired. Yeah. But people tend to look at the financial side of business acquisitions. Is it worth it? How much capital am I going to need? But the landmines are in the cultures of the businesses. It's you have two separate companies doing business two separate ways with different leadership and you're going to roll them together and it almost, well, almost always, or maybe always, that's where the problems are. Yeah. And the same kind of things we're talking about right now, clarity, where both sides, the acquire or and the acquire E, if those are words, you, you have to be clear about who you are and what you do so that people can make their choices to come along with you or maybe leave. But yeah. rolling together the cultures. I'm a spreadsheet guy. You know that. It's so easy to put numbers in a spreadsheet and multiply two of them together and get a result. It's not that easy to bring two company cultures together. And that's where the hard part is. And pretty much that's when they don't work, a lot of times that's why. Yeah. Well, and a couple of things that you said there. Um... I think for for a lot of our listeners, they understand how hard it is to run a small business. They know the pains, the struggles, the idea of acquiring a business from somebody else. They're all they know that they're bringing along some baggage if they acquire that. All the the stress and the you know poor culture fits or whatever it is, they they have kind of an innate sense of oh, I might be getting into that uh, just because of their personal experiences that they've they've had. That's not always the case. There's, I, we had a, we've had a couple of ed- episodes with guys that I think are really great for this uh, next segment that we're about to talk about. But the Chris Edwards was the um, gentleman in Colorado who came from a finance background, was doing right. private equity roll-ups. Uh, yeah, really, Steamboat Streams. Yeah, he's in Spe- uh, Steamboat Springs. Really great guy. Purchased a small business during the pandemic uh, that was a um, flooring. flooring company. In, and and also countertop eventually came with it in in Steamboat Springs and he he was learning the struggles of it but he's also like doing a really good job um, which isn't always the case and I think especially with all of the COVID relief uh, packages that the government did and we kind of talked about that in the SBA episode but basically we'll pay the first six months of your small business loan to acquire a small business and all this kind of stuff, you had kind of this flood of people that really don't have SMB experience going in and buying a contracting business for the first time because they understand the financial aspect or because they were, you know, a, a operator at a large corporation. And then they start to see, oh crap, like we don't have any of this stuff in place that I had at my <laughs> previous job. Or this isn't just a numbers game. This is a people troubleshooting, putting out fires game. And so, We've also had another guest on the episode on on the show called uh, John Matzner. Really great episode on hiring talent overseas and and beyond. Uh, he did a lot. Of, he's, he's a really great follow on Twitter if you're not following him. But he had a tweet that was. I'm just going to read some of it because I think it's hilarious. Um, big mistake I see SM, uh, SMB buyers make: cosplaying as private equity. Do you know what cosplaying is, Martin? No. You know those. No. It's costume playing. You know those huge conventions where the People oh. dress up as the Nintendo characters or whatever. I, I have not been to one of those. <laughs> no, I've never been. But basically, <laughs> I know you go and you, they yeah. really think they are the characters, like they're Zelda or they're whatever video game character. Anyways, SMB buyers acting, uh, cosplaying as private equity. Um, and he said, you're trying to buy a company from some guy named Larry. Judging Larry for not knowing his KPIs is really arrogant and wrong. Larry put his family through college off his business when you were still trying to remember to feed your Tamagotchi. I don't know what that means. Larry knows more about actually running a business than almost everyone in uh, Finn Twitter is what he's talking about, but like finance Twitter, the finance guys combined, the stress, the ups, the downs, the nerves. Um, He's never bought a course. He never built a dashboard and he knows more about business than all of us. If you're lucky enough to find a Larry, instead of asking him for his data room, how about you get to know the guy? 
Larry doesn't care what where you went to school, what you used to do, or how you have a great idea for a new CRM. He just wants to know if you're a good person, will treat him fairly, and not be an arrogant jackass as he considers passing the torch. Anyways, That's beautiful. I, uh, I think it's such a good point. Oh, it is. And uh, I'm writing a speech right now for that I'm kind of promoting. And I've talked about it before is the four fundamentals of business. And we've talked about that a lot. Uh, all true, all uh, important. But one of the points I'm making in the talk is that entrepreneurs begin their business to do something they're good at. Unfortunately, being in the business of doing something is a completely different animal than just doing it, right? Now, private equity guys, a little bit different than that. Right. But it's the things that you don't know about. It's the it's the leadership issues, these good ideas of how to work with me, how to onboard clients or uh, customers and, or not customers, employees and customers. Um, how do you, how do you build a culture, keep people from leaving? What's your leadership style? They never thought about that. How do you marketing and sales? They've heard about that, but they're not really any good at it. They just think, oh, I'll hire one of these SEO guys or a AdWords guy or a Facebook technician. And all these leads will flood in and that just doesn't happen. Uh, and then all the administrative things and it's been, you know, like bookkeeping and HR and IT and legal issues and corporate governance and banking and managing cash flows. When they start their business, they're just good at doing whatever they do. And it is those, those three areas that cause most of the problems. It's very not, it does happen, but it's very seldom that somebody goes broke because they don't know how to pour concrete or build a house. It's one of the other things. It's uh, people are leaving or they don't do marketing well, or they run out of cash, or they get fined for have, not having workers comp. It's those things. And and that, I think, is kind of what you were saying about the man. Larry knows more than all the fintech guys combined because yeah. they've never done all that. No. It, instead of being good at one thing they do, they're over here good at one administrative function. And they just said, well, just hire people. I remember talking to uh, somebody, well, actually, I remember who, but I won't say, about how hard it is to be in business, how much suffering there is in small business. It's not all suffering, but there's a lot of suffering. And I, he said, well, like what? And I said, well, like you go out and do a job and people don't pay you. And he goes, well, he said, bullshit. I'll get paid. <laughs> I go, Okay. How about you start a business of getting me paid? I'll have you collect everything. You know, just the absolute, uh, and I don't mean it in an insulting, I mean it in a literal way, ignorance, you know, of people that don't realize everything. Yeah. So that's that's a great point 